That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You might wonder why I've got a bowl on my head and carrying a hassle blade and an oven glove. Well, I, I can't switch the video on with two oven gloves, but that is the trouble with going to the moon. You've got these huge gloves and you've got a thing over your head like that which makes you speak funny. But they are the immortal words spoken by Neil Armstrong in 50 years ago, in 1969, when he stepped on the moon. And I've played a small part in the moon story because I was the first photographer to photograph the first sample of moon dust that Neil Armstrong put into his pocket as a contingency sample. And they carried a Hasselblad camera, didn't they? But they couldn't use the viewfinder because they, with their great big things on their head like that, you can't see down into the viewfinder. <laughs> so Hasselblad had to make an entirely different one with no viewfinder, but a sort of a, a, a wire effect. And they, no handle, because you can't wind the handle with huge gloves on. So they had an electric Hasselblad with batteries in it and you just press a button and it winds the film on for you. And then after they've done their stuff, they leave behind the expensive box part and they just take the, the film with them because of the weight. So there's several of these expensive lunar Hasselblads on the moon. If you like to go there, you can pick them up for nothing. But they brought back the film. Well, what was my small part in the moon dust story? When I was at University College London, I was in the geology department as a scientific and technical photographer there. That was my, my, little, my little studio and all the apparatus I had. And NASA begrudgingly sent over a microscope slide. Like that, the microscope slide. Put it something black. I mean, here we are, look. That size. It's very small. And on it was stuck some moon dust. The sample that Neil Armstrong had put into his pocket. There were no rocks. They came much later. And the Americans kept all the rocks, first of all. We didn't get any rocks. We only got some dust on a microscope slide. But uh, as they... As the geology photographer, I was asked to photograph it. So what did I do? Never seen moon dust before. Well, it just looked like a lot of granules to me. But at the time, I had a Vickers Armstrong projection microscope, which was a huge big thing, like a desk. And you sat down in the big chair, and it had carbon arcs. And you struck the carbon arc, and it had a huge light appearing <laughs> on these carbon arcs. To, so you could see what you're doing and it had raised super British enlarging lenses as the lenses a couple of different ones for different magnification and you could take half up to half plate glass plates so that's what I did I, I loaded up some half plate size glass plates which is about, which is about just over six by four inches and it, I used a, a Kodak orthochromatic plate and to get the best resolution from these raised super lenses you ha you put a green filter over because the moon dust didn't have any color so I used black and white glass plate with a yellow filter and s what did I see well I searched and searched the sl slide and I found this this little thing amongst the debris of the moon dust. Now this is actual bits of moon dust here, but this large object was interesting. And I had all the professors come to my department and musing over what it was. And they said, oh look, it's glass formed by the action of the sun on the moon's surface. I thought to myself, is it? And then they sent it to the Sunday Times and I got a half page picture 
in the Sunday Times. There's the there's a photograph of my half page picture as published in the Sunday Times. It's dated ah now this is I haven't got the date on it, but it was November 50 years ago, 1969. I have the original cutting which is 50 years old but it's up in the loft and we can't find it so this is a photograph of it which was on my Flickr stream so sorry I can't find the actual newspaper bit which is all dark brown now after 50 years I still got it but where is it? <laughs> Lord only knows it says here a drop in the lunar ocean this weird object was brought back from the moon's sea of tranquility by the Apollo 11 astronauts. It was spotted by scientists at University London Observatory in a sample of moon dust supplied by NASA to Dr. John Bastin of Queen Mary College. In fact, it's only about a millimetre long and it's shown here magnified more than 200 times. It does not mean that the Apollo 12 crew now heading for the moon are likely to find even a tiny lunar bug. It's a glassy bead formed almost certainly when a droplet of molten material thrown out by a meteoric or volcanic explosion solidified in a free fall. My God. The strange shape is probably the result of solidification starting at the waist-like constrictions in the original droplet. Peter Elgar, that's me, technical photographer in geology department, University College London, took the photograph, for which I got nothing. Half page of the Sunday Times, not a sausage even, not even a free turkey or 25 pence fee, no, nothing. Now, I looked. I was looking at this, and I thought to myself, "If it's glass, why is it this bit here is flattened? When I press the microscope slide, cover glass because it's covered over and stuck down with a cover cover slip. It flattens. If it's glass, that wouldn't flatten, would it? But I was only on twenty-seven pound a week, and these learned professors and stuff." They must have been on £80 a week. So I wasn't going to argue with them, but it turned out I was right and they was wrong. Because what it was, was a piece of plastic that had broken off the sieves. That the Americans had sieved all the best bits out and sent us poor Brits only the rubbishy bits of moon dust. <laughs> I was right, poor lowly photographer on £27 a week. It wasn't, a, it wasn't glass bead at all. But anyway, I've lived with that story for years and years now. So I thought 50th anniversary, I'll tell my subscribers. And if you like my stories, have a look at my channel. There's lots more on there about photography and some funny things. And please subscribe to me. Then you'll get notified when I put another video up. So, I hope you enjoyed it and one small st step for man, one giant leap for mankind.